Former President Donald Trump is facing new federal charges. We'll tell you what the indictment said and how Trump is responding. And a major pharmacy chain is letting go of thousands of its employees amid a company restructuring. The rundown starts now. This is Straight Arrow News, bringing you unbiased, straight facts. Today is Wednesday, August 2nd. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. Today, an indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with conspiring to defraud the United States, conspiring to disenfranchise voters, and conspiring and attempting to obstruct an official proceeding. That was special counsel Jack Smith on Tuesday announcing new federal charges against former President Trump. Trump was indicted for allegedly attempting to overturn the 2020 election. This is the third time in four months that the former president has been criminally charged. The four count 45 page indictment charges Trump in three criminal conspiracies. First, accusing him of a conspiracy to defraud the U.S. using, quote, dishonesty, fraud and deceit. Second, a conspiracy to obstruct the election official proceeding, specifically with the counting of electoral college votes on January 6th. And third, a conspiracy against voting rights. Prosecutors say then-President Trump pressured state and federal officials, including Vice President Mike Pence, to alter election results. Trump is currently the Republican frontrunner in the 2024 presidential election. His team issued a response on these latest charges through the Truth Social site that read in part, the lawlessness of these persecutions of President Trump and his supporters is reminiscent of Nazi Germany in the 1930s, the former Soviet Union, and other authoritarian dictatorial regimes. These un-American witch hunts will fail, and President Trump will be re-elected to the White House so he can save our country from the abuse, incompetence, and corruption that is running through the veins of our country at levels never seen before. The former president is due in federal court in Washington, D.C. on Thursday. The federal indictment also included six unnamed co-conspirators who have not been charged. They are accused of helping former President Trump in the alleged crimes. However, while not named, numerous media outlets have reported on who these six people likely are based on the descriptions in the indictment. The media outlets include Reuters, ABC News, CNN, The New York Times, The Hill, and The Wall Street Journal. According to reports, the descriptions in the documents indicate they are former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani and three Trump lawyers, John Eastman, Sidney Powell, and Kenneth Chesebro, and former Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark. These outlets say the identity of the sixth person is unclear. This person is described in the indictment as, quote, a political consultant who helped implement a plan to submit fraudulent slates of presidential electors to obstruct the certification proceeding. Fitch Ratings has downgraded the United States credit from its highest AAA rating to a AA plus, citing the nation's growing debt, the debt ceiling standoff that almost led to a default, and eroding political stability. The International Credit Rating Agency says the American economy is fundamentally strong. The White House says it strongly disagrees with their decision. In response to the world's largest economy downgrading in credit ratings, U.S. stock futures have fallen this morning. The Pentagon had previously deployed 1,500 troops to the border in May, ahead of Title 42 expiring and when the U.S. was experiencing a surge in migrant crossings. Now those troops are being pulled back. 1,100 of them will be leaving their post at the border by next week. The other 400 will vacate by the end of the month. Crossings surged in May to more than 10,000 encounters a day, prompting the assist from the military. Now Border Patrol says there are about 5,000 encounters a day at the southern border. There is an ongoing legal battle over a buoy border wall Texas installed across the Rio Grande River. For coverage of the governor's legal fight with the DOJ over keeping the buoys afloat, head to san.com. CVS will slash 5,000 jobs, largely its corporate staff, in order to cut costs. The move is also part of a company redirection to focus on its health services, like its walk-in clinics. In a statement, the retail pharmacy giant said, quote, the difficult decision we are making will set the company up for long-term success. The job cuts come just as CVS is to release its quarterly earnings report today. 
California politicians are calling for the end of an era that is an end of Taylor Swift's era's tour. While the singer is scheduled to perform in Los Angeles at six sold out shows this week, some are calling for her to postpone the mass event. All because hotel workers in the area are on strike. Politicians signed an open letter to Swift telling her hotels are going to make major profit when she comes to town, which is typically great news for local economies, but critics say the boost will help the hotel industry while its workers are in limbo over contract negotiations for higher pay. Earlier this year, the Federal Reserve credited Taylor Swift for boosting the U.S. economy and tourism. The hotel industry having its strongest growth since the pandemic, thanks to the Swifties booking stays to see the icon. Those are your top stories this Wednesday morning. Thanks for choosing Straight Arrow News as your trusted source. Be sure to check out more of our work at san.com and subscribe to The Rundown as a podcast to hear from us every weekday morning. Unbiased, straight facts, that's Straight Arrow News. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.